In the last lesson, we examined the technique of plugging in numbers when the quantities include variables. In this lesson, we'll examine a useful strategy that can increase the effectiveness of the plugging in numbers approach. To set this up, please consider the following question. Now, when it comes to plugging in numbers, I suggested in the last lesson that these numbers represent a nice cross section of values and they're relatively easy to plug in. However, this does not necessarily mean that these are the only numbers you should consider. More importantly, even if you do choose numbers from this set, which ones should you plug in first? Well, before we plug in any numbers, it's always useful to ask the question, is there a value for the variable that makes the two quantities equal? You'll see in a moment why this is a useful question to ask. Now notice that when we examine the question here, we see that both expressions have a constant term of negative 7, and the remaining terms all have x's in them. So we can make all of these terms evaluate to be 0 if we let x equal 0. If x equals 0, then we'll plug 0 into the two quantities and then evaluate them to get the following. So when x equals 0, the two quantities are equal. At this point, it must be the case that either the two quantities are always equal for every value of x, or the two quantities are not always equal. So if we choose some other number at random and plug it in, and the two quantities are still equal, then there's a good chance that the two quantities will be equal for all values of x, which means the answer will be c. Conversely, if we plug in another number and the two quantities are not equal, then the answer must be d. So what number should we plug in next? Well, if we plug in 1, we get the following. And when we evaluate each quantity, we get negative 6 and 2, in which case quantity b is greater than quantity a. So since we get two conflicting results here, the answer must be d. The relationship cannot be determined from the given information. Alright, now that you understand the strategy, you might want to pause the video and try this next question before continuing. Alright, once again, since we have variables in the quantities, one approach is to consider plugging in numbers. If we go with that approach, it's a good idea to ask, is there a value for the variable that makes the two quantities equal? Well, notice that both quantities consist of products of binomials, and both of them feature the binomial x minus 7. So if we let x equal 7 and plug 7 into both quantities, something nice happens. Both of these binomials evaluate to be 0, and any product that includes 0 must evaluate to be 0. So great, we've quickly shown that the two quantities can be equal, which means the correct answer here must be either C or D. At this point, we need to plug in another value. What would be a nice value to plug in here? Well, for this question, plugging in one of these numbers would take a lot of time. On the other hand, if we plug in 16, the two quantities are very easy to evaluate. In quantity A, notice that this binomial evaluates to be 0, and any product that includes 0 must evaluate to be 0. Now in quantity B, none of these binomials evaluate to be 0, so we can be certain that their product does not evaluate to be 0. Notice that we don't need to find the actual value of quantity B here since we already found one case in which the two quantities are equal, all we need to do now is find a case in which the two quantities are not equal, and we can then be certain that the correct answer is D. Okay, let's summarize. In this lesson, we learned that if you decide to plug numbers into quantities involving variables, you should ask the following question. Doing so can save you a lot of time on test day.